In this video, we present a general overview on how and under what conditions porous materials may be damaged by the freezing of water in their porosity. This is illustrated by the dramatic, but also, and for building materials, rather rare case of a fully saturated body freezing from all sides. Subsequent videos review a more general series of particularly relevant cases in practice. Unlike almost all other fluids, water expands when it freezes with an increase of about 9% in molar volume. This results from each water molecule forming two hydrogen bonds in the crystal structure of ice. Water molecules thereby organize into hexagonal rings, a step that is crucial in explaining the volume change. These rings further form layers that are then stacked one on top of the other to give the 3D structure of ice. If this volume expansion happens within a porous material, it can lead to damage depending on specific conditions of exposure. However, as already mentioned, this is not the only way that freezing can damage porous materials. Regardless of the mechanism, the growth of ice in pores may be resisted by the porous matrix through a radial compressive stress. This goes along with a tensile hoop stress that is particularly damaging to materials that are weak in tension, such as stone, concrete and brick, with tensile strengths of only a few megapascals. To visualize this, let us imagine someone trying to put on a too small belt. That person's belly experiences a compressive radial stress, sigma r, against which it pushes back. This is analogous to the ice trying to expand in a confined space. As the belt compresses the belly, the belt experiences a tensile hoop stress, sigma theta, stretching it in the circumferential direction and potentially causing it to break if this stress exceeds the tensile strength of the belt. This is similar to how the matrix of a porous material may experience tension when ice forms in its pores, pushing out against that matrix. While this occurs around the pores where ice grows, the overall effect is to put the matrix in a state of tension and possibly causing it to crack if the tensile hoop stress in that matrix exceeds the tensile strength of the material. This underlines that the freezing resistance of a material is conditioned by its tensile strength rather than its compressive strength. A main factor influencing freezing damage is the degree of water saturation of the porosity, as empty pores represent free expansion volumes. However, for these to be effective, water must be able to easily reach and or expand into them. To illustrate this, we consider a pore in which water fills a length W. Owing to freezing, that length would increase by 9%. So, as ice grows, it pushes water into the empty part of the pore. This movement of water is resisted by friction of water on the pore walls, which develops a pressure that can cause damage. This pressure is much higher for fine than coarse materials and explains why coarse materials are more difficult to damage by freezing than fine ones. This can be understood through the Poiseuille equation as explained in our video on hydraulic pressure. We now examine how volume changes play out in the case whereby freezing proceeds from all sides. Examples thereof would be fountains or finials subjected to rain. In such situations, Ice first forms outside and grows toward the interior, trapping unfrozen water within the material. Not being able to escape, water then gets compressed. Its pressure increases as it pushes against both the advancing ice and the pore walls. This pressure is substantial as it may reach 13 MPa per degree Celsius below zero and, as explained previously, is accompanied by a tensile hoop stress of similar magnitude. So, 
even relatively mild freezing events can be very damaging to materials with low tensile strengths, such as stone and concrete, if freezing water is trapped. As previously mentioned, in unsaturated materials, the unfilled pores represent free expansion volume for the freezing water. Growing ice pushes water towards them, which can limit the pressure development if the liquid can flow fast enough. Whether or not this happens depends on the exposure of the object and on the permeability of the material. In conclusion, the freezing of water can damage porous materials that are weak in tension because it leads to tensile stresses in the material. While this video only presented the role of volume expansion as a driving mechanism, other mechanisms are more relevant in practice and are described in our subsequent videos on freezing damage in building materials.